I'm sorry about this, Miss. Good afternoon, Jim. Look, there's just been some form of misunderstanding where I really don't need to be here. I think I'll be the one deciding that. Just give me a moment to finish this. If Look, you could take a seat. If you just let me go, I can be out of your hair and... Uh, June, can... sit down so I can get this sorted. No. <sighs> Look, just let me go and I can be out of your hair. If you continue this, I'll call your parents. No. Miss, please don't. Then sit now. That's a start. Now, I want you to tell me what has happened, and I want you to tell me honestly. No, that's fine. I'll let you finish that work first. You already know what's happened. Do you want to hear it from me? I want to hear your side. <laughs> My side of the story. Are you alone on that one? Don't you want to tell me? Well, today, class began like it would normally. I walked in and took my seat in the back. I thought you were at the front of your class. I was moved. Then I spot Michael at the front, seating himself next to Rosie. I even had the pleasure of hearing that oh-so-romantic conversation. You feeling right today, Rosie? Fine, thank you. Why do you ask? She didn't even glance at him. It's just you seem a bit tired. No makeup. You don't want to look like Fumpy back there, do you? I'm listening. Then he walks in. Mr Phillips. Yes. I know you think he gives you a hard time. I'm sure. So, I just sit there, ready to work, because that's all I wanted to do. That's all I ever wanted to do. <clears throat> and then he just starts monologuing. Caesar did this, Mark Antony did that. So, I just sat there and took my notes, because I didn't have much else. Despite the fact that everybody in that room knew these facts better than the back of their hands, I was hoping we could move on to something better. And then he announces that since we've gone over all the necessary stuff, we could spend some time discussing what Cleopatra was best known for. And I was relieved. Well, at first, anyway. She's great, she really is. And the shouting began. Answers just thrown across the room like a flood or a hurricane. Her dresses shouted Rosie, her eyes yelled another, and her beard cried a third. I'd had enough, so I threw my hat into the room. Don't you think there's more to her than her appearance and her demeanor? And then the whispering began, and I don't even know why they bothered, because it still pierced my ears. Why is she so weird? Words are merely carried upon the air, but it doesn't matter. Because I can still weigh on the heart, even if it isn't fair. And Mr Phillips did nothing? Nothing at all. He should have. Can you tell me the rest? June, I'd like to know. I couldn't help but cry out and ask what was funny, and they just snickered some more. And then Michael popped up with a, what's your problem then? If you only gave her a chance, you'd see that there's so much more to learn about her. Still, at least she's treated a little more than a chapter in a book, or a scene in a play. We all have our own stories to tell. Why ask of the whole world be a stage? She has her wit, wisdom and charm. Her guile, temperament and wealth to spare herself from any bodily harm. I'm tired of hearing of Herodotus and Virgil. What of Hypatia and Sappho? Why are they the ones pushed to the back and kept out of sight? There's so much more to her than you know. How much can you explore when you place her atop a pedestal? And Michael. Just laugh. You know, she ended up alone. He was right, to be fair, but I still didn't know what to say. I must have seemed like an idiot just standing there. It's fine, June, just sit down. I couldn't stand her any longer. I was sick of behaving, all of the formalities and how the pretty words rang, so. If I was to play the monster, it was better to bear my fangs. So I turned to Rosie. We'll never really listen to you. You know why? Because all you are is a mere feast for their eyes. I can still see it. All their smirking and giggling. Michael's smirk was practically begging for the pen that I threw at him. And after all that, Mr Phillips finally spoke up. But instead of coming to my aid, he yelled sit down at me. I just stood there, frozen from misbelief. So I was making a fool of myself. Was that when you ran out? I understand. I know what it's like to feel outnumbered. 
You know, my mum said this college was going to be good for me. And it was, but for a time. I even made a friend, but I don't think anyone really liked being around me. And it doesn't matter, because <laughs> I always preferred reading over chatting. People are far more likeable in prose than they are in person. <laughs> I don't think so. No? No. Why? I think you're likeable. She never really liked me much anyway. Who? Rosie. I'm sorry. Hmm? I'm sorry your friendship didn't last. Then I ran out. Um, I don't even think she was looking, probably smirking and giggling like the rest. She had her head down, actually. So I couldn't really tell. Should I? Go and apologise. Yes. I think you should. I think that would be best for both of you. You know, June, not everyone is against you. If you gave people more of a chance, I think you'd find you have more in common than you think.